Thanks for joining us today. You're about to hear a message from Pastor Adeta Noife Damala, and we believe that God's word is alive and transformative. God bless you as a listen. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the adoration. Because all power belongs to you. You are the who was, the who is, and the who is to come. Your word is sure. Your word is tested seven times, and it came out pure. Lord, your word will go out again in power, in virtue, in might, for transformation, for impartation, for understanding, and for building to the full stature of Christ. And all glory, Daddy belong to you now and forever amen it's good to have you again the title of this teaching is the ministry of the world the ministry of the world this is a very crucial topic and the understanding of it will change your life forever it will change not only your spiritual life it will change every aspect of you. As Apostle John says that he wishes that we are all that will prosper even as our soul prospers. So the word that I'll be speaking to you today will bring an wholeness in you from inside out. And you shall be thoroughly imparted in the name of Jesus. The ministry of the word. What is ministry? Ministry is like a portfolio or a role that one is assigned to undertake. That is why we have ministers, ministers for education, ministers of, of communication. These ministers are in charge of ministries, which is a role or an assignment that they must carry out. In that same way, all believers are given a ministry. And that ministry is the ministry of the world. But it's a pity that many of us do not have a due knowledge or due understanding of what our ministry is. And in fact, it is our very first ministry. But as the world will go out today in understanding, you will take up the load. You will take up the responsibility and be a minister of the world indeed in Jesus' name. What is the significance of the word? What is the significance of the word of God? How powerful is the word of God? What value does it have? The only thing God exalts above himself is his word. The only simile to the word is God himself. Jesus Christ is the word and Jesus is God and the word is God. By faith we understand that all that the words were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. That's 11, Hebrews 11 verse 3. Everything we see, everything we see in this world were framed by the word. People ask where is the pillar that hold the heaven and the heart? The pillar that holds the sky that makes it not to fall is the word. What sets boundary on the sea and the great oceans is the word. The word is the final authority in heaven and on earth. Looking at the evil world, I mean the word of wickedness, the word of darkness, what do they use? They use the word. Somebody will stay at the corner of his room, call somebody's name, put some incantation on it, and cast a spell and even if that person is 1000 miles away if that person is in overseas the spell will cut up with that person and that person may become mad or die or whatever the person have said into the spell that is the power of the world i watch a news documentary whereby in a country the wife cast a spell on the husband the husband had sex with a strange woman and the man and the woman were glued together. They could not be separated. What does that work? It is the word. 
So even in the evil world, the world is so important. The same way in the kingdom of God, the world is very, very important. I mean the word of God. Looking at our natural settings in the court of law, for instance, what determines the judgment is not even the case. It's not even the crime. It is the use of word by the lawyers that will determine how the judge will place his or her judgment. So the discovery of the word is the discovery of all times. The discovery of the word is the greatest discovery any man can make. When you discover the word, and when you discover what is in the world, you have made the greatest discovery, you have made the mother of all discoveries. The book of Hebrews 4 verse 12 says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Let me take that again. Hebrews 4 verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a designer, is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The scripture says, the word of God is the quickest, it is the fastest, it is the sharpest, and it is the surest. The word of God is the quickest, it is the fastest, it is the sharpest, it is the surest. The word of God is the most powerful, where the blade of the sojourn cannot get to in the body of man. The word of God can penetrates into it. The word of God goes into the spirit. It goes into the soul. It goes into the body. It can operate in the most hidden part of man and in the most hidden part of the heart. That is how powerful the word of God is. That is how strong the word of God is. That is how reliable the word of God is. The word uphold all things. The word creates all things. And the word is the quickest, the fastest, and the sharpest, the shortest, the most reliable. I, had, I read the testimony of a man who had a fracture while he was playing baseball or something. And the process, he had a fracture. And somebody sat beside him and gave him the word of healing. The, the, the best thing to do at that point in time by human thinking is to take the man to the hospital or apply a first aid. But the man sat down with him for 20 minutes, tell him about the word of God. Tell him about how the word of God can enter into his bone and heal that bone. While that man was doing that, the man stood up the first time, he fell again. The second time, he fell. And the third time, the man realized that they were missing something in the world. And as they discovered what they were missing, the bone was healed immediately. Even as I speak the word to you right now, you will have your instant healings. You will have your instant testimonies. The word will walk into you and wrought wonders in the name of Jesus. What is in the word? What is in the word that makes it so powerful? That makes it so strong? That makes it so reliable? That makes it so surest? that makes it the best and the mother of all discoveries. Romans 10 verse 8 But what saith it, the word is near thee, even in thy mouth, and in thy heart, that is the word of faith which we preach. The number one thing in the word is the word of faith. The word of faith. It said by faith we know that all things were made, all things were framed by the word of God. The Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Anyone that will come to God must believe that He is and is the reward of them that diligently seek Him. I tell you, the currency spent in heaven is not dollar, it's not naira, it is faith. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. When I discovered in my scriptures that it is impossible to please God without faith, 
And I told myself, if I must look for any other thing, it must be fit. Because several of us are running earth and scatter looking for how best to please God. The Bible says the only way, not one of the ways, the only way to please God is by faith. And how do you get faith? The Bible says faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So, if faith is so important, then we need to locate where the faith is. And faith is in the word. Second thing that is in the world is the word of healing. The word of healing. Proverbs 4 verse 20 and 22. Proverbs 4 verse 20. It says, My son, attend to my words. Incline thy heart unto my sins. For they are life unto those that find them. And health to all, thy, all their flesh. My son, attend to my words. Incline thy ear unto my sins, for they are life unto those that found unto those that found them, and health to all thy all their flesh. Do you hear that word? Health to all their flesh. Health to all their flesh. The word of God produces health. The word of God heals you. The word of God makes you to stand on your faith. By the grace of God, for, the, for many years now, I have never fallen sick. I have never taken any drug. Why? Because I discovered the word of healing in the world. Nobody living under my roof have been sick or rushed to the hospital. Why? Because I have discovered the word of healing in the word of God. The Bible says, by his stripes ye were healed. By his stripes I have been healed. I discover that it is that I have been healed, not I will be healed. It is not I will be healed. It is I have been healed. Then I took hold of that word and I realized that whatever sickness that will be discovered even tomorrow on the planet Earth will not be the portion of myself and my household. Why we have been healed. I got that by the discovering, by discovering the word of healing in the world. And since that time, I had relationship with a chemist, with a hospital, with doctors. So when you make this discovery in the world, it becomes yours. Some may make the discovery of salvation in the world, because we are saved by faith through grace. We are saved by faith. So many are saved by faith. They discovered the word of salvation in the world. They believed it and they received their salvation. But they may not receive healing. Because it is the amount of what you discover that belongs unto you. Take for instance, you are digging a well in search of water. And another person is digging a well in search of bowl. Is digging a bowl. You are digging a well, the person is digging a bowl. So there is a difference. He will get a lot of water while you will get few water. So the more you discover, the more you get, the more it becomes yours. Then the word of success. Daniel 1 verse 17. Daniel 1 verse 17. As for these four children, God gave, God gave, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Who gave them? God. God gave them knowledge. One well, of the Bible says the food is not for the skillful, the race is not for this, is not for the swift, it is of the Lord that showeth mercy. God gave them knowledge and skill in all, all means all, in all learning and wisdom, and in addition, he gave Daniel understanding in all visions and dreams. Bible says they were ten times better than the astrologers, than their colleagues, than the magician, that even the king wondered. Praise God. So it was God that gave them. Why will God not give you success? God gave Daniel academic success. 
it gave him career success, it gave him spiritual success. Why would the same God not give you? If you do it for one, he will do it for all. If you do it for one, he can do it for all. If he has done it before, he can do it again and again. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, the same today, and the same forever. So when you discover the word of success in the world, I will tell you how to make your discoveries. But I'm telling you what to look out for when you are looking into the world, what to discover when you are looking into the world. The next thing that is in the world is the word of prosperity. The word of prosperity. Many are saved by the word. They discovered salvation in the world. They got baptized in the Holy Ghost. They discover baptism of the Holy Ghost in the world. They were healed by the word. They discovered healings by the word. But they are very, very poor because they did not discover prosperity in the world. Mark 6 verse 20. Of Matthew 6 20. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. God asks us to lay up treasures for ourselves in heaven. Now, when you lay up treasures in heaven, are you going to keep them in heaven so that you can spend it when you get to heaven? No. It just doesn't say that. It doesn't say keep it up in heaven so that when you get to heaven, you can spend it, you can use it. You don't need all those things in heaven. You need it here on earth. So just a saying, bank your treasures in heaven that you may have it here on earth that you may be able to access it while you are on earth. For instance, the nearest branch of my bank is some kilometers away. That is the nearest branch. I don't need to get to the bank before I can access my money. I can transform my mobile phone. I can use my ATM. I can buy goods. I can withdraw cash even without stepping into the bank for years. So, when you bank your treasures up in heaven, you don't have to go to heaven to access it. That is what the word of prosperity gives unto you. It says, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt. No inflation, no deflation, no subsidy, no, no crash in dollars, no economic meltdown, no crash in the price of crude oil can break into it. And where thieves do not break through nor steal, where tax, no matter how high it may be, does not affect you. Where the cost of things does not affect you. Where even thieves... I mean, human thieves cannot break into your pro properties where sickness cannot eat it up. And then Mark 10 verse 30, when you lay up your treasures in heaven, it says, when you serve God, leave everything to serve God, the Bible says, but ye shall receive an hundredfold now in this time. This, this was Peter asking Jesus, what is that again? Having left our families, our brethren, our monies, our properties to follow you. What is then our gain? Say, but you shall receive an hundredfold now. How many fold? Hundred. In this time, what are those things? Houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands. You will have all back unto you here on earth now in hundredfold with persecutions and in the world to come what will you have internal life not money not houses many others of us who think when we get to heaven, we're going to live in mansion well some people say they have a duplex some people say they have a street name after them people say they are still building their own house their houses are the foundation i don't know if those statements are other symbolic meanings but the fact is there are no such things as houses, as mansions, as flats. Bible just, just indeed says, my father's house, there are many mansions. Yes, but those are symbolic meanings, not properties that we hold. I'm saying if there is a house, that, uh, if there is a house there for you, there must be a TV set, there must be electronics gadget and so on. No. And even the Bible says in the last days, we're going to be living in the new earth. This, and I saw the new heaven and the new heart. So it's not, it's not going, it's going to be built by God. 
So everything that we laid up in heaven is for us to use here on heart. I hope you get that. It says you will get these things back with persecutions. Persecutions. What does this mean? There is no way God will bless you that persecution will not come. There is no way God will bless you that criticism will not come. If you have ever been at that spot of blessing, Jacob was persecuted. He was sent away. Isaac was persecuted. Even Jesus was persecuted by his disciple when the man uh, when the woman broke the flax of oil and poured it upon him. Judas were like, Master, are you so wasteful? Are you in your right mind? Why should you do such a thing? So when you, are, when you get to that point, when God really bless you, then you will know what that persecution means. There will be persecution in this world. People will say, where do, you, where do we get all these things? And in the world to call eternal life. What else is in the world? The word of deliverance. Colossians 1 verse 13. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. He, let's read the Bible, try to read the Bible in a plain and literal language and absorb it in, in that same manner. Then faith will arose in you to possess your possession. For he had delivered us from the power of darkness and had translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. It's like somebody living in the UK adopting a child in Nigeria. Once you adopt that child, the child automatically becomes a, a citizen of the United Kingdom. Since he has translated us, there has been a change. You have been delivered. Not you will be delivered. No, you have been delivered from the kingdom of darkness. There was a time I was expecting something, some amount of money, and the person I was supposed to give it to me was behaving somehow i'm a minister of god by the grace of god and i've been a blessing to her life so why she was behaving that way one day i was do, going about my assignment and the devil and the devil told me maybe some evil spirits are blocking your blessing the devil suggested that to, to me i knew it is the devil because the bible says whatever is not of faith is a sin so maybe some evil spirits are blocking your blessings I looked up in anger and said, can the governor of a state in Nigeria stop the payment of salary of USA workers? Is that possible? So how can evil spirit stop my own blessings? We are not in the same kingdom. We may be on the same planet earth. We are not in the same kingdom. You are on the same planet Earth with the ambassador of U.S. Even when you are in Nigeria and the ambassador of U.S. is with you in your country, Nigeria. That doesn't mean that you, are, you belong to the same kingdom. No! You may be in the same classroom. You are not in the same class. A primary school teacher may be in the same classroom with the poopies in the class. But they are not in the same class. I may be in the same world with darkness. We are not in the same class. There is a word of darkness, there is a word of light. That is where I am. So I have been translated. I have been delivered. Some believers go about to pray for deliverance and the likes. I don't want to say much about that now. But the truth is, believers doesn't need a spiritual deliverance, but a mental deliverance. I have delivered many people by the grace of God, merely preaching the word of deliverance to them. And as I was saying the word to them, they were getting their deliverance. And as I'm speaking to you right now, you are delivered in Jesus' name. <laughs> there is a word in the scriptures. What again is in the word? The word of the Holy Spirit. But let me take a step back to the word of prosperity. Deuteronomy 8 verse 18. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which is swear unto thy fathers, as it is these days. I just want to read that portion of the scriptures unto you. 
Now, the word of the Holy Spirit is in the Bible. As God the Father was in charge of the Old Testament reign, it was it was directly involved. Um, the Holy Spirit and God the Son only played a supportive role. Likewise, in the days of Jesus Christ, God the Son was fully in charge, and God the Father and God the Holy Spirit was playing a supportive role. The same way in our own days, the Holy Spirit has taken the full charge. God the Holy Spirit has taken the full charge. And if any man will go far in this age, he must have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Moses, we believe he was so lucky in his days. Um, Abraham, we believe he was so fortunate. We believe Isaac was so favored because those ones had that relationship with God and all the prophets. We believe the 12 disciples, they were so blessed by having a relationship with Jesus Christ. But there is, those are the blessed in these days. 2 Corinthians 13 verse 14 says the grace of the Lord, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. The communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. When you are not in fellowship with the Holy Spirit, you are the biggest loser in this age. Jesus could only be at a place at a time in his days. But God the Holy Spirit is in every place at the same time. You can have the Holy Spirit with you. What again is in the world? The world of spiritual growth. Do you want to grow spiritually? Then the world is your pass key. 2 Timothy 3 verse 15 And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Jesus Christ. Timothy knew the scriptures as a child and had since been growing in faith. I gave my life to Christ at the age of 11 and I was chewing the scriptures, I was reading the scriptures, I was taking everything in, hook, line and sinker and from that time till this time I had never had a break. You can grow spiritually when you enter into the ministry of the world. God bless you. So how do we enter? into this ministry of the world how do you partake in the ministry of the world the first thing is to read you must read you must read the scriptures again paul told timothy said and that from a child that has known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in christ jesus the scriptures is able to make you wise unto salvation what is salvation salvation is not just being saved from sin and a passport to heaven salvation is beyond that salvation includes a good living here on earth a life free of sin free of sickness free of lack you must read the scriptures for you to get into the ministry of the word. Ephesians 1 verse 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. He has blessed us with all, with all, with all. And where do you locate these all spiritual blessings? Now, spiritual blessings does not only mean your spiritual life, but it's all encompassing. So, how do you get into know these spiritual blessings without reading? The word of God is like the will of God, which a deceased father writes to his children. So, the word of God gives unto you your rights and what to do to get those rights. We must read the word from cover to cover. It's a good culture built by the old saint and we must progress in it. You have to read the word of God from the cover, from the from Genesis to Revelation. Many Christians only open their Bible once in a week. No wonder you are under such an oppression of darkness. 
what do you tend to gain when you read the Bible from cover to cover? Number one, you understand how God speaks, how God lives, how God leads, how God acts. I am a reader of the Word of God. I thought I've been reading the scriptures since childhood. And God has been leading me. So many times when, when I check the scriptures, I see a correlation between how he has been leading me and how he led some persons in the Bible. There are some things God said that I, in the scripture that I say, yes, that is how God speaks. For instance, if your mom writes a letter to you or your mom sent a message to you, whether you are in school or somewhere, do you hear your mom's voice in that letter? Do you hear her voice in that me- message? For instance, you are far away on campus and your dad sends you a text. Make sure you remember the child of whom you are. As you read the message, it's as if you will hear your dad's voice coming out through it, through those letters. The same when you read the scriptures, you hear the voice of God, your father, coming out through it. Many ask, how do I recognize the voice of God? The word of God is the recorded voice of God. When you read it, you can hear his audible voice in your heart. We watch movies where somebody writes a note, maybe a suicide note or a letter, and when they read, they read out the voice of the person who had written that letter. Because it is so in the natural settings, we tend to hear the voice of the person that has written to us. Take for instance, maybe you have a husband or you have a fiance. And he writes you a message in the middle of the night. Maybe he's not at home or he's not with you. And he writes you a letter. How are you doing? You know I care about you. You know I love you. You hear his voice. You feel the emotions. The same thing with the world. There was a story of a man. This man, this old man, tell his grandchild to go and fetch water from the river using a basket. So the man gave him the river and the child took on on his feet, fetched the, fetch that water, and as it was coming, before he got home, all the water was gone. The father told him, how manage you, you, you pour all the water away before you got home? The boy tried to explain, the grandfather said, no, you have to go back and fetch another one, and this time you have to run, so that the water will not pour away before you get home. So the young man went there the second time, fetched the water, and he was running all through his strength, could carry him, he got home, all the water gone. Then the grandfather said, you have to go again. You didn't run very well the first time. And the young man went again, ran down, the water were all gone. The man said, no, you have to go the third time. So at the third time, this young man came again, the water was gone, and he collapsed on the floor. And the old man told him, even though this basket does not retain water, can you notice any change on the basket between the first time you went with it and now? The young man looked at it and the child said, There is a change. The basket was rusty and dirty the first time, and now the basket is clean. The same thing goes with the word of God. When we read the Bible from cover to cover, I mean read, not study now. You read as if you are reading a novel. You tend to be to be cleaning your heart. Your mind may not retain so much, but you are cleaning your heart. Your heart is being cleansed. Let me give you an example. If you pick a romantic no- novel to read now, you don't have to remember all the words in that novel before that before you began to feel lustful the same way when you read the novel maybe a normal novel this time after reading it your intonation tends to change your character tends to change you tends to put on the character of the characters you have read in that novel that is why they are called characters so when you read the bible as well you may not remember so much when you read when you read through you may not remember so much but it has rubbed on you to clean your heart and to change your character to the befitting one in the world. Now we have scriptures on our phone. 
you can read it at the park you can read it in the traffic you can read it in the toilet you can read it anywhere i mean just reading that is the first way to enter into the ministry of the world then the second way is by listening is by listening listening to to the word proverbs 1 verse 3 says and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season his leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper you have to live in an environment where you can always hear the word of god that's what i call the word environment maybe at church you listen to the word of the pastor on sunday fine but in your home the home must be a word environment where you can listen to the word of god bible says write the write the commandment on your doorpost when you sit down tell your children when you stand up tell your children write it on your palm put it on your forehead let the word be available in all places parents should make sure their children are are, are groomed by the word when they speak few words quote some scriptures make references to the word and as believers we, mo- we must maintain an healthy environment called the word environment at school the kind of friends you move with will be such that you don't end a conversation without referring to the scriptures you don't make a one answer it's not about being spiritual and if you are being spiritual that is the right way you should be because bible says those those that are born of the spirit are spirit and those that are born of the flesh are flesh you are a spirit you are not flesh so you have to be spiritual you have to be in the world environment when you are in the world environment, there are some things you have not read. Some people say it in your hearings. There are some you have read, you've forgotten. They say it in your hearings. There are some you have also. You say it to others. In that way, you will perpetually understand your rights. You will perpetually understand what is in the world and how you can apply it to your own life. The third thing is to search. Is to search. Nobody puts a good treasure on the surface. It is hidden on the ground. It is reading under so that you can search. And that word for search is study. Paul Timothy study to show thyself approved the work minded not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. In your search, you can undertake a strategic search. A strategic study for instance i want to study about the word of healing remember a time i used to fall sick not so much but i don't like sickness at all but more painful is that people around me are falling sick and i have nothing to do about it and i took it upon myself i'm going to search for the word of god on healing and i began my search and the search today has produced several people who does not use drug? Who does not fall sick by the message that I preach? So you can decide to search. You've been failing in your academics. Okay, let me search for the word of academic success. Let me study. Okay, I want to study the book of Daniel. I want to study the book of Hebrews. I want to study the New Testament. I want to study the Gospels. I want to study the prophet. I want to study the story part. That's the story part of the scriptures. First Judges, First Samuel, Second Samuel. 1st Kings, 2nd Kings, then 1st Chronicles, 2nd Chronicles, you will have interesting stories in those places. You can decide to search and study, okay, I want to study the reignship of David. I've done that b- before. I wanted to know how David lived live this life. And I discovered a lot of things that has helped me in leadership and raising mentor and, re- and, and, and in mentorship up to now. So you search. I want to search, I want to study the book of Ruth. You can make a decision right now to search. And your searching could include books. In fact, not that could, it must include books. There are things, no matter how much you read, you may never be able to see it in the Bible. There are books I've read that have changed my life and I'm still reading more and more books on different topics that I may not be ashamed while dividing the word of truth in those areas. The next one, I've talked about reading, I've talked about listening, I've talked about searching. The next one is research. This is much more deeper. Research. When you want to research in the Word of God, 
you may be you may start to include knowing the greek word the hebrew word that are used the words that are used in the bible maybe there's a verse may the communion of the holy spirit be, be with you the communion there means koinonia and the colonia has about eight eight synonyms in the english word it was one of my search that i discovered that and today several things we do in our ministry is in on the word koinonia in fact, our WhatsApp platforms, we have about 38 groups. We so group it in a way that they are all named after the synonyms of koinonia. So you can research what is the Greek word, what is the Hebrew word, what are the rendition, what does it mean. You can look for Bible history. Maybe there's a passage you read, you want to have much and more understanding about it. Then you go for the Bible history. For instance, there was an history I read where the bible says knock and it shall be opened unto you the young uh, the man of god spent we go so travel to israel at the time and there he realized what that scripture actually means that in the culture of the of the hebrews the culture of the jews when you knock the gate when you knock the gate or the door the maid will come out to check you if you are a known person in that house the maid will open it but if you are not a known person it will shut that door go back upstairs to inform his boss that so so person has come i don't recognize him then if the owner of the house is satisfied that he knows you they send back the maid to come and open that door unto you so when the bible says knock and it shall be open unto you the history has it that when the you knock you are not going to be open unto if you are a stranger that means when you knock the door of heaven, when the angels come, they will recognize you and they will open it up. So there are underlining histories. The wedding at Canaan, Jesus turned water to wine. There were large pots there that contains water. But we have weddings in our contemporary days, this time, that you don't see any pot of water anywhere. So how come there was a pot of water at that place? There are histories, cultures that underline the placement of water in those place in in that kind of occasion. Praise God. So you can look for Bible dictionaries, uh, Bible dictionaries that will help you to find the Greek meanings. You can look for commentaries. There are books on this, but there are also applications which are very helpful in this age where we have a lot of apps, so you can download them. There are Bible commentaries. Devotional also is a form of com commentary that helps your research in the world. And then you can take time out to attend the Bible Institute. I won't say you should attend a seminar a seminary or a Bible college if you are not a pal, if you are not a minister of God. And you may attend also as a believer. But a Bible institute or where or some courses on the world, it will help you in the understanding of the word of God. Praise the Lord. And it's going to build you up. The next point is do. Having read, having listened, having searched, having researched, that is not enough. You have to do. You have to do. You have to do. You have to put into practice those things which you have read. In the book of Acts 1 verse 1, the disciple says, the apostle says, The former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach. He that look at the word, listen to, listen to the word, and does not act on it. It's like a man who look at his face in, in a mirror and immediately has forgotten what he looks like. He could not make any amendment on his body because he has not perceived he has not fully understood what it looked like or let's say he has forgotten but we must do we must act we must be a living bible praise god and the next point is teach teach what jesus began to do and teach you don't have to wait till you know all before you can begin to teach that little you know somebody lacks it somebody needs it so we should all go into the ministry of teaching the word in whatever capacity we may be 
either as a minister, as a worker, as a leader, as a father, as a mother, as a student, as a mate, as a colleague. We need to look for ways to teach the word of God. I believe everything I've said, I well understood. It's not enough to just listen to what I've said, but to act, to take conscious steps, to do it. And when you do that, you will find out that the result will be amazing. You can come off sickness, you can come off poverty, you can come off illnesses when you understood the word of God on those areas. You can live an holy and perfect life by the grace of God when you understand what the word is saying and you do, you act on it. When I took this teaching on our online, on our WhatsApp colonial groups, there, is, there was a question I would love to answer here as well. Somebody asked, what should we do with different versions of the Bible? While I was explaining such, I mentioned, I don't think I mentioned it right now, but I mentioned there that we need to consult several versions of the Bible. Several of us are used to KJV, King James Version, and in actual sense, we don't understand the word written. We don't understand the language. So there is no Bible that takes you to heaven, per se, or so to speak. You can consult any version of the Bible. Though I learned there are several fake versions, demonic versions here and there. But you have a lot and enough of good versions. Myself, I'm used to NLT, New Living Translation. I use KJV. Every passage I've been quoting, they are all KJV. But where I need more clarification, the next one I go to is NLT. And most times in my study, I place NLT side by side with KJV. So you can look at several versions and adopt one to yourself. Don't just use KJV alone. And the question was that, like sometimes what, what a version, what should we do with different versions of the Bible? Like sometimes what a version says is almost entirely different, different from another. It may look different, but they, may, they are not actually different. When you compare versions, it fosters your understanding of a passage you may find confusing in another. I tell you, the first place I go is NLT. If I'm not clear yet, I go to Amplify. If I'm not clear yet, I go to NIV. I search. If, I, if I'm still not clear, I can go to commentaries, I can go to Bible dictionaries, I can look for the Greek and Hebrew word. But more, most times than not, people have asked questions from me. I, I always tell them, let me see the scriptures you are quoting from. Some quote from a passage they don't understand. I only answer them by showing them another version. So, they, may, they are not always different. They may look different, but they are not, they are not different. It's, and using it will foster your understanding of a passage you may find confusing. Praise God and the Lord bless you as you take this word to heart and to do and as you teach others in the name of Jesus. Before I pray for you, I would like to inform you that Sons and Daughters of Zion Saddles is an interdimensional and non-dimensional ministry. We have a Bible institute called Koinonia Bible Institute. It is an online Bible institute. You can apply online your courses, your lectures, they are all online. For now, we have four courses. School of Faith, School of Healing, School of Deliverance, and the School of Prayer. If you need understanding any of those biblical concepts, you can apply. And we're going to be adding more courses as time goes by. So right now, the form is out and lecture will commence fully March 1st of this year. I'll be bringing to you update about it. But to, to apply, you can contact any of the phone numbers I'll be mentioned to you shortly. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for your word that has gone out with power, that has gone out with understanding. Thank you because you have placed to our hands a glorious ministry, a profitable ministry. Every hears and art that has partook of this section, may they be able to make use of everything said in the name of Jesus. Getting into the ministry of the world will be convenient for them. They will find it interesting. They will find it glorious. They will be able to stand true and be a living proof of the world. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. 
Amen. I hope it's been a wonderful experience in God's presence. We are always encouraged to know how God is using this ministry to change lives. If you have a story you'd like to share on how God is working in your life, let us know by sending us an email to saddlesworldwide at outlook.com. For counseling, contact these lines 0806 736 5770 0706 091 6344 0810 652 2911. May the communion 